Veterinarians say heart disease is the number four cause of death in dogs. They say the causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment can vary widely. We'll talk about all of those issues on this episode of The Paw Report with Dr. Marcy Kirk. So stay with us. Production of The Paul Report is brought to you by... Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of The Paul Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Dr. Marcy Kirk joins us for this episode of the Paw Report and she's brought along her pal Charlie uh, to talk about pet heart disease. So thank you so much for joining us. Oh, and thanks for having Charlie us. Charlie is just a little dream boat. <laughs> he is so precious and you said he's four years old? Yep. And he is a golden doodle. Mm -hmm. He yep. is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. As I mentioned, we're talking about pet heart disease. And before we actually get into the heart disease topic, we need to kind of understand um, a mammal's heart. Mm -hmm. And it's made up of four different chambers. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, it's it's in a way very similar to human hearts. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's four chambers that, you know, basically the blood comes in, pump it to the lungs to get oxygenated and then pump it to the rest of the body. So those chambers kind of work a little bit in a circle, you go to the lungs, come back, and then take it to the rest of the body once the oxygen's there so you can get oxygen mm -hmm. through everything else. Mm -hmm. So what is what is heart disease? I mean, specifically in, in animals, but what I what is it? So I think heart disease, is a lot of things all in one. It's just basically saying there's something wrong with the heart. It's not working at its optimum level so that you can get oxygen everywhere, which is necessary for all life. Um, and it just, it could be a lot of different conditions that just mean we're not, we're not functioning properly. Mm -hmm. How common is heart disease in dogs? Um, do you see a lot of animals come into your office with with problems? Is mm -hmm. it prevalent? So I was just reading um, something. It's a little different in people. You know, I think they say that heart disease is one of the number one you know uh, things that kills people. It's mm -hmm. not quite that common in animals, but it's something that we definitely look for because our animals are living longer and longer lives. So that means things are going to start happening where things aren't working as well, and the heart is one of them um, that can start to kind of over time not be as efficient and then we need to st step in and intervene so it's not the number one disease but it's something we definitely want to search for it may sound like a strange question but do dogs actually have heart attacks you know they can but it's not something that we see frequently it's not because they can't say you know oh I've got chest pain or sure. anything like that mm -hmm. but we don't tend to see it too often um, they can go into like an acute crisis where they're either having a really strong arrhythmia and you know you can tell they're in distress um, but it's not definitely not as common as you see in people mm -hmm. is heart disease the same as heart failure are they I would not say they're exactly the same so you know as I said before heart disease I think we've got a problem with the heart, you know, but heart failure means that we're really not functioning well. There can be other forms of heart disease um, that don't mean the heart is failing. So y there can be a case where you maybe have a tumor, you know, on the heart and it's not causing heart failure yet, but it could lead to it. So there are things that cause heart disease that could lead to failure, mm -hmm. but failure means we're not pumping blood. We're not, you know, we need to intervene because otherwise we're not going to make it. Sure. What are the different, um, different signs you know if I have a pet how would I know what are some of the warning signs what are the th things that I should look for to see if maybe my my dog is experiencing uh, sure. a problem that's a great question um, and there are it's different for cats and dogs um, 
cats are just a whole different scenario and a lot of times they won't show us any signs at all. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll focus on the dog and some of the things that you um, want to look at is, you know, if, so like Charlie, he goes on runs with me, you know, we can run three, four miles and he's great, doesn't have any problems. And if they used to do that, but now they're getting worn out a little more quickly, uh, maybe they're only making it a mile or two miles and they used to go four or five. Um, so an exercise intolerance, even if your dog isn't that athletic, but they used to walk around the block and now they make it down the driveway and they're like, oh, I just can't make it any further. That's one of the you know first things we'll see. Um, you might also notice, you know, well, he's really worked up and panting and excited, sure. but like when they're relaxed or sleeping, you know, they breathe very easily, very slowly. If you start noticing there's an increased effort with that, where they're really kind of oh, it looks like I'm noticing that he's breathing more. You know, he's taking bigger breaths and he's really relaxed. He's not panting and he's not excited. Mm -hmm. um, that is another thing that we'll see is a change in their breathing pattern or their rate. And they actually make an app on your phone that's free that you can like track yeah. your dog's breathing, your res their respiration rate when they're sleeping. Um, and that's kind of nice to have so you have a baseline and then you can kind of work from there and so you can track if they do have heart disease, you know, that's really valuable for the veterinarian to know what their resting respiratory rate is mm -hmm. um, so that we can tell if they're struggling more than, than, we, think they, than we thought. What about, um, elaborating a little bit more on the signs, what about a change in diet or maybe any signs of weight gain or weight loss? Would that have sure. anything? Um, in cats, yes. Um, we will see cats um, lose weight um, with some heart disease and maybe not have any other signs. Um, and obviously, if you have a pet that has extra weight, similar to people, that is going to put more of a strain on their heart. It has to work harder to get, you know, the blood circulating to make sure everything goes. Um, it can also raise their blood pressure, which means the blood has to work, or the heart has to work even harder to go through those vessels. Um, so that means it's working harder and it can tire out more quickly. Plus, if there's fat around the heart, you know, it's not working as well. Are there different types of heart disease? Mm -hmm. What yeah. Are they? So I think what we probably see the most common is as pets age, the valves in the heart that keep the blood from going back and forth mm -hmm. and moving it in a forward direction. Um, it starts to either thicken or just not be as efficient at pumping. So that's the most common one we see, it's called mitral valve disease. Um, but there are some genetic diseases that some um, are prone to. Um, so some of the larger breed dogs um, are prone to like a, they're basically it's called dilated cardiomyopathy, where the heart is very, the muscle is very big and loose and it's just kind of not, you know, you, your heart pumps like this and it just kind of doesn't pump so it's not efficient and those big dogs you know they need that heart to be efficient they've got a lot of body space to mm -hmm. work with and cover that they need blood to flow through um, and that's something they could be born with so it's something you want to watch for definitely screening those large breed dogs um, the, tr the tricky thing with them is sometimes they won't have any symptoms. You know, we can listen every time we take them to the vet, you know, the vet puts a stethoscope on there, you listen to the heart and you may not hear any signs of an issue. Um, so that's when we start to screen other ways, which would be like x-rays or um, an ultrasound of the heart to see how it's functioning. What are some of the leading causes of, of heart disease, particularly in dogs? Yeah, this is another thing that would be different um, in people. You know, they say you need to get out there and exercise and eat right and everything. That doesn't tend to be the case, whereas, yes, we want them to stay fit. Um, we don't want them to get overweight, but it doesn't seem to minimize their risk for heart disease as they get older. So a lot of times I would say old age um, is, really? is a risk for them um, or their genetics. You know, some of those mm -hmm. larger breeds we talked about, mm -hmm. um, and it used to be in cats before, you know, we really started regulating the cat food industry. They would be short on um, taurine, which would cause them to have heart problems. And now it's not really an issue. So that's probably why we don't see it as often in cats anymore. Mm -hmm. you, we've talked or you've mentioned mm -hmm. different breeds. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the breeds that might have problems more so on sure. heart disease than maybe some other breeds, sure. large dogs versus mm -hmm. smaller dogs. And it is, we do tend to see the genetic link in the larger breed dogs. That's not saying 
smaller breeds couldn't have it, but one breed in particular that has something very unique to them um, is the Boxer. Um, they are a large breed, but they can also have a life-threatening arrhythmia um, that they can have, and it can be controlled, but you definitely, boxers in general should be screened very regularly for any signs of heart disease. Um, and make sure, if you're getting a puppy from a breeder, make sure that the adult, you know, the the parents of them were screened for heart disease um, because it can it's a pretty serious problem in the boxer uh, realm. The other breeds, you know, um, Dobermans and Great Danes, those, you know, you think of those giant yeah. breeds, yeah. Um, Newfoundlands, some of those really big breeds um, are another ones you just want to be extra careful of. They can have that dilated, you know, heart where it's just a little too big and doesn't work as well. Mm -hmm. If I'm bringing let's say Charlie is my pet, and I'm bringing Charlie into your office uh, just for the routine you know, vet checkups. Mm -hmm. What sort of things do you do for a pet owner? Um, they're not maybe seeing any signs, but you know, just the routine checks. So what, take me through that process. Sure, well, anytime you go to the vet, you know, they're gonna check nose to, to tail, right. um, and that includes putting a stethoscope on the heart and lungs. And they can have um, some signs, now not Every dog or cat that has heart failure is gonna have a sign that we'll talk about, but they could, and that's how we're gonna catch it early. So um, we can listen to the different chambers of the heart and we're gonna to listen to all those. And what we're gonna listen for is a heart murmur or any sounds in the lungs that might be something different, you know, where fluid could be accumulating. Um, so we'll listen and if we hear a heart murmur and it's new, that's gonna be something we wanna you know, investigate. Um, we want to make sure the owner's not noticing any exercise intolerance, you know, any coughing, any, um, you know, just breathing heavy or anything like that. And if they're not, you know, we're still going to talk about, well, maybe we need to get some baseline x-rays, see the size and shape of the heart, sure. make sure it all looks okay. Because there are such a thing as innocent murmurs. I had a, a beagle growing up. She had a heart murmur diagnosed at the age of nine, and we just checked it regularly, and it never caused her a problem. She never had any issues with it, but she had that heart murmur that we just wanted to make sure it didn't develop into, so she had heart disease, but didn't have heart failure in uh -huh. that case, so. Okay. So uh, I bring Charlie in, you do some checks, and you do notice that there's probably, there may be an issue. Mm -hmm. There's some chest x-rays that are done, and, and he's been diagnosed with um, heart disease. What are some of the treatment options? I'm sure there's a lot out yeah. there. But, and if there are, let's go through sure. some of the lists. So it depends on you know the, the type of heart disease. And one thing we could do to try to narrow it down a little bit is set up a time with a cardiologist and have an ultrasound of the heart done, an echocardiogram. Um, we don't always have to do that and not everybody can afford that. So if that's not an option to really pinpoint it, then we're gonna start trying to ease the burden of the heart. So if we, let's say on the x-ray, we saw fluid on the lungs um, because it's backing up because the heart's not pumping the blood like it should. So fluid's starting to accumulate. That's a lot of times where we start seeing the cough come. And even mm -hmm. if they're not coughing anything up, it feels like there's something on their lungs they need to get out. And so they're trying to. Um, so a lot of times we'll start with um, things like Lasix, you know, a diuretic that'll pull fluid off the lungs and make them a lot more comfortable. And that's very common in um, people it's used too. So um, people are usually familiar with um, Lasix you know, as a treatment. One of the other treatments that we'll use is something that kind of helps lower the blood pressure a little bit um, so that those vessels can loosen up and make it easier for the heart to pump blood through there. We wanna make the burden of the heart's job a little easier. And so that's one thing that um, we will use commonly. That's kind of our first line most of the time. There is a new drug um, that's out that helps the muscle of the heart contract so it can be more efficient, and we'll a lot of times grab that. Now, that won't work for every heart condition, um, and if there is something else going on, um, we'll, we'll use a different, but if it's just the typical mitral valve disease that we talked about, those are the kind of the first drugs that we go to. Now, if it's the boxer arrhythmia, we're gonna do a different medication that will help kind of regulate the heart's rhythm. You know, it may sound like a silly question, and, and you know, when we think of heart problems in humans, heart, open heart surgery uh -huh. is sometimes an option. Yeah. Is there open heart surgery performed on dogs? It, they can, and they can put in, I mean, stents? Um, pacemakers, stents, things like that, absolutely. Or if there's like a tumor on the heart, um, sometimes they will go in and, and remove that. Typically that's done by a cardiologist and like a board certified cardiologist and surgeon. Um, it's not something most practitioners will do, but that doesn't mean 
that they couldn't try mm -hmm. it. Um, but a lot of times you need special, um, you know, breathing, ventilation, things like that. Um, there's also a condition in dogs, there's a sac around our heart, and sometimes it can fill with fluid, and that's called pericardial effusion. And that, obviously, your heart can't expand then and, and pump like it needs to because this fluid's blocking it. And in some of those cases, they can go in there and make a window into that mm -hmm. sac. Um, and then that, you know, the fluid just kind of drains and the heart, the body takes over, you know, absorbing that and, and flushing it out. So they can definitely do open heart surgery. And let's say a, a puppy is born with a heart defect. I, I've seen it twice done in general practice where um, there was an extra kind of that should have gone away, an extra valve on the heart, basically, mm. um, that should have gone away as normal, but it was kind of restricting the esophagus, and then it's not working as well, and you can go in there and, and clip that out. Um, and it's, it sounds, much, that sounded much easier than it actually right. is, but, but you know, you're going into the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be. I mean, it's very risky. You know, you're getting into lungs and, and things like that, and it's a whole intricate um, system, but it can be done, and, and both those dogs lived and are doing very well. So um, it's something that not every general practitioner will want to do, and if you have the option for referral, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they can definitely do surgery on the heart. Well, speaking of that, and I know it's the million dollar question and all pet owners want to know, what are the survival rates for you know dogs that are diagnosed? Every heart is different, every yeah. dog is different, every right. body is different, just like humans. No, that's, but, that's perfect. But that's probably the first question mm -hmm. that you're asked when, right. when and, somebody's experienced. And that's exactly our answer too. You know, we don't know, but we, do know things we can do to help them. Um, there's not, because it's not the number one disease in animals, um, you know, that, that causes death or anything. So there's, there is, there are some studies, but I don't have any, you know, survival rates. But I can tell you, you know, if we're very proactive about it and we do regular checks, um, you know, they're survive they can live a long time with it. Um, now with the arrhythmias, that's a little bit harder. They um, you know, might need, they, they probably will have a shortened life expectancy compared to another dog that doesn't have any heart disease. Mm -hmm. But some of these pets, you know, like I said, they're a lot older when they get heart disease. Um, and if we get them on proper medication, sometimes changing their diet to a lower sodium, you know, diet um, can help. It They can live a long time. And, you know, that's what a pet owner wants to hear, yeah. you know, because they're part of their family mm -hmm. and, they, and they don't want to lose them. How do you know if, the the medicine regime that you're talking about is working yeah so it, we'll use Charlie again mm -hmm. I bring in Charlie he's been diagnosed there is a, a very strict regiment of mm -hmm. medicine that he needs to be on diet how do we know if it's working so that's gonna come back to the things that we were noticing so if you notice a problem, you know, the exercise intolerance, the um, coughing, or the just kind of feeling blah, you should see that stop. You should see an improvement in that. And that's another place where that app um, will come in handy or that's monitoring funny. their respiratory rates um, because we want to know what they're doing at resting. If they're back to a normal, what we would consider, there's kind of some thresholds that we, you know, let's say, let's say 15 respirations a minute whenever they're sleeping is normal. You know, if they have heart disease, maybe we're going to accept 15 to 20, if we're seeing over that per minute, then we're going to start maybe tweaking the medication um, a little bit more precisely to what they need. And in some cases, maybe they're feeling better, we can wean them down to a lower dose and then just bump them up if they start having problems. So I think it really comes down to the, the symptoms you're noticing at home. And if they weren't noticing any symptoms, they may notice all of a sudden, maybe they were so gradual and onset, now we're on medication, wow, he's He's Change. really feeling better, you know. Yeah. So if they start noticing that slip back to maybe he was sleeping a little bit more, things like that. Um, and I know that's hard because older dogs tend to sleep more, mm -hmm. but you should notice that their sleep is more restful. You know, they're not having trouble breathing or anything like that. And maybe you didn't notice it before, but now that it's not there, it's, you know, you notice it would come back. But you shouldn't rush. You know, all pet owners, I've been there, I've had a dog, I had a yellow lab that had an enlarged heart. Mm -hmm. And you just so desperately want them to get better yeah. and to feel better. And I think probably the one thing that I did that I shouldn't have done is really rush back, her name was Winnie, getting Winnie back out in the yard running and yes. playing, and going for those long walks because that's what, I, that we just want them to do that. You want them but to be back not, to themselves. But that's not a good idea. Right, so you know, you gotta remember the heart's a muscle. 
Um, so think about if you've injured any other muscle or strained a uh, tendon or ligament or something like that, you're gonna have to rest. And what they're gonna prescribe to you then is to go slowly back into your exercise. So I, a mile, like let's say they used to sure. go a mile, you know, and then when they got diagnosed, they could only go a half mile. Well, you're gonna start doing maybe a quarter of a mile maybe maybe a time or two a day, and then slowly work up to what you used to be. But you gotta make sure that muscle is taken care of. Um, it's just like anything else, you know, you strain anything else, and that's gonna be really important to rest and work your way back up to where you were. Let it heal. Mm -hmm. You mentioned when you were uh, a little girl, you had a beagle that had mm -hmm. a heart murmur. What is a heart murmur? And you mentioned in your case that it was it was an okay mm -hmm. thing to have, but mm -hmm. what is it and how serious is it? And and that's a really good question because it can be serious and it can, like in the case of my beagle, it can be just something we need to watch that could eventually cause a problem. So a heart murmur, again, we talked about the blood in the heart, you know, has certain areas it's gonna go, you know, we wanna always move forward. It's gonna either move to the lungs or move to the rest of the body. Um, whenever their valves don't close tightly and for whatever reason, maybe the valve isn't working well, maybe it became thickened and can't close as well, blood starts to swirl back and forth, back and forth. And so when we listen on uh, a stethoscope, we start to hear kind of this whoo, whoo, kind of washing machine, oh. they kind of, you know, hear it. And we should no normally just hear that ba-boom, ba-boom. You know, if you hear that extra thing in there, we're starting to notice that there's something not right. Um, and again, if they're not having symptoms at home, we take x-rays, it measures right, we might just watch it, but at least we have a baseline. But if we start noticing they're having symptoms, maybe on the x-rays the heart looks a little enlarged or rounded or anything like that, um, then we might start medication. Um, one other thing that we kind of didn't touch on I, and that we should talk about, um, heart disease can also be caused by heartworm disease. Mm. Um, so that's something that you know you, yearly they might do a heartworm check, but it's very important, especially in this area, to keep them on heartworm preventatives because the heart, um, the, the worms live in the heart and lungs and obviously they can cause damage. So even if you cure, let's say they go through the treatment, they're cured, they could have already caused damage that could lead to heart failure later in life. So um, that's something that you can prevent too. Well, and that leads me to uh, my next question is, can you prevent heart disease and what can pet owners do to make sure that their, their pets stay healthy? Sure, well, I don't think there's any one thing that can prevent it. Like in people, they tell you to go exercise right. and you know, eat, eat right. And it doesn't seem to be the case in our dogs yet. Now, in 10 years, we may be having a different conversation. Maybe our pets are living even longer, but definitely keeping them, you know, at a lean body where they are not overweight makes it so that their heart doesn't have to work as hard. But it, it seems like genetics and age are the, the biggest factors and we can't really do Change anything that. about that. So um, it's mostly just kind of knowing what's normal for your pet really helps the veterinarian, you know, a lot. And if you start noticing any changes, that's gonna be really um, beneficial to tell them so they can really pinpoint on their quality of life and what works for them. And it, it, we mentioned food and diet. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that is something. When you go to a store to, you know, try to decide what to feed yeah. your, mm -hmm. your animal, you're just overwhelmed it with is all overwhelming. the different types yes. and kinds and lamb and rice and, uh -huh. you know, all the different. Is that, should you keep an eye out for that? I mean, is Well, I don't think there's anything in the diet. I mean, when, if they're diagnosed with heart disease, we are going to recommend a lower sodium, but I don't think there's any food that's going to cause not you know a magic heart. food out there right that you right take this and you're not yeah gonna you're not going to have heart disease yeah i don't think that there i think as long as you're sticking with a good name brand food um, most of the time and feeding appropriate amounts you're doing about everything you can to minimize their risk um, because most of the time like i said it's going to be as they age or if they had a genetic predisposition you know some of the larger breeds or things like that Let's talk just a little bit as we wrap up our, our discussion uh, about cats, uh -huh. because is the treatment the same for cats? Cats, I, we, I mean, I feel like you could fill a whole show with how different cats are <laughs> from dogs, and that makes sense, but um, the, the heart disease that cats get is really tricky. The most common one they get is where the heart gets so, so thick, it can't get blood um, or pump efficiently at all, um, and that's called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, so it's kind of the different complete opposite of dilated cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. um, so with them, a lot of times you might notice that they breathe differently. You might notice some weight loss. We might get lucky and hear a murmur. Um, but a lot of times it's kind of 
if we start seeing any of those symptoms, we definitely want to take x-rays. We definitely want to think about, you know, an echo uh, cardiogram, which is the ultrasound of the heart. Um, they can be on some of the same uh, medications. I had a cat that I treated very, very well. It was a young cat that had the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy mm -hmm. um, where the wall was just so thickened. Um, and it did great on one of those medications that kind of um, dilated the vessels so it was easier for the heart to work. To work. Um, and so they can, they have the same medications available. Um, it just is kind of up to the cat, I think, sometimes if it's going to work or not, because they are very, it's very difficult. And sometimes with cats, they're trained, they just want to instinctively hide things from us. So a lot of times we may not catch it until it's too late. And the, and the important thing is, just as we take our dogs to the vet for routine yeah. yearly checkups, it's very important to take your cat, even sure. though you don't see any signs of right. problems. Right, that's exactly right. And what makes them tricky too is, they seem to be more likely to have innocent murmurs. So we might hear that and it might be nothing, but it's something we'll wanna watch for sure. And checking them yearly, every six months, things like that is very important. Even if they stay inside only, there's a lot of things we can screen for and bring them in. All right, well, Dr. Kirk and Charlie, you've been <laughs> well behaved today, probably because you've got a little pocket full <laughs> yep. of treats. But gotta you. bribe them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, thank you so much. Our, this, this was fun and very interesting, and I actually learned a few things. So thank you Great. for joining well, us. Well, thank you. All right, and thank you for joining us for this episode of The Paw Report. Did you know full episodes of The Paw Report are on YouTube? They can be accessed at youtube.com slash weiutv, then just go to the Paul Report playlist and select the episode you want to see. More information about the show is also available 24-7 on our website at weiu.net under the television tab. Production of the Paul Report is brought to you by... Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sales Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston.